Howdy. Howdy. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So you've got some instruments behind you. <laughs> yeah, just a Lovely. few. Yeah, so you're in Adelaide, are you, at the moment? Yeah, um, I live at um, Encounter Bay, which is uh, 80k south of Adelaide. Okay. We're on the seafront here. It's really lovely. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Great. I haven't been that Where way. are you? Uh, Melbourne. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I think last time Love I... Love Melbourne. Melbourne's great. Love it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, last time I was in Adelaide was probably, oh, gee, early 90s. I played in the club there in the, in the Heinle Street, is it? Yeah. 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 I can't remember the name of the club. It was a bit of a dive, but... <laughs> yeah, I know, I know the dive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 So um yeah, so you've got the show coming up on April twenty second in Melbourne, then you've got the other dates as well around Australia. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Uh, looking I've heard good things about that. I'm not familiar with that venue, but because we're doing this Brewster Brothers electric thing, so we're playing kind of smaller venues, but you know, it's uh uh but I'm kind of excited about it because I mean, the reason behind it all is because is, is that we've been around for a long time, you know, as you <laughs> would know, <laughs> and uh, and we wrote a lot of songs. And and you know, when we do the Angels, it's wonderful. But you know, the Angels, we do all the, the big hits, and yep. and and there are so many songs that fans love that we don't do. We, you know, like most of the shows we do with Dave Gleeson singing with us, you know, and it's fantastic. But we play for an hour, you know, maybe 50 minutes to an hour, you know. So you can, you know, you do 12 or so songs. You know, we've got, I don't know how many, lots of songs. So, so this, this gives us an opportunity to, while Dave's out in the road with the Screaming Jets, to do to do some of these songs that people love that we just don't do. You know, songs like, like Eat City, for example, and Don't Waste My Time even get out of this place we hardly ever do that with the angels okay. so yeah there's lots lots of big songs and also songs like we're doing three songs off the um uh, uh what's it the skin and bone album that was okay. which was the last album that we did with doc yep. um and i'm really proud of that album i think it's a great album it, it was kind of probably it slipped, slipped through the cracks a bit we were with, with a different record company at the time you know, we're back with Mushroom now. We have been for many years. We, you know, we've kind of joined at the hip. Yeah. But um, so we, we're doing Call That Live In. We're doing uh, Moving On and Invisible Man off that Skin yeah. and Bone album. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah, we might even do Alexander. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. People love Alexander. I don't know, you know. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. We <laughs> love the fact that they love them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, so many good songs there. Yeah, and the thing is with Brewster Brothers Electric, it's going to be a rocking show, uh, mm. but our drummer, Nick Norton, is the front singer. Yeah. Uh, and when I first met Nick, he had his own band called Gangarai. They're a fantastic band, and he was the, he was the front man. Oh, really? Uh, played guitar and, and sang, and, and he, I, I was just knocked out with you know what a charismatic singer he was um so he he's a wonderful drummer too he's been playing with us now for oh no 12 years or something yeah, yeah. um at least 12 yeah no about 12 years and um uh but this gives us a chance to go and do some songs and have him be the front man yeah that's great i called dave gleason i said hey dave i hope you take this the right way but we'd like to play some of it and he said you don't have to he said, thanks very much. He said, you don't have to give my permission. He said, they're your songs. You can do what the hell you like, you know. <laughs> I said, well, that's very nice, but I don't want to do it without your blessing. So, yeah. Because I, it's not the angels. It is, it's funny. It, it's the angels, but it's not the angels. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. But it's a great way of doing it, though. Like you said, you know, doing these cuts that people don't really hear much of live. So it is really like, yeah, totally different band, but. Um, yeah. yeah doing a great song. The thing is, we love what we do, you see. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so to to be able to do a few gigs, and it's only a handful of gigs at the stage. I mean, we recorded a four-track EP called Lives of Grace, and I'm really proud of that. Yeah. Uh, our friend Mick, uh, Mick Skelton played the drums on those, and God, he's fantastic, just fantastic. So yeah. uh, um, approaching our 50th year, which is next year, yep. I've got to tell you, Adam, it's 
the life is great. It's fantastic. The band's going great. We've just come back from New Zealand. We played with ZZ Top and Pat Benatar on the Stone Temple Pilots. We've all become friends. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's what life is these days for, yeah, exactly. for us in the band, you know. It's great. Yeah, that's really good. So with the band, so you got, I mean, your brother's on guitar, of course. <laughs> so yep. And then yep. you got, is it your, your son on bass? Yeah, well, Sam's been playing with us uh, since Chris Bailey took sick and sadly Chris died. And so that's got, um, Sam's been with us for, uh, well, that's 11 years as well now. Yeah. Uh, and he's a fantastic guitar player, um, but he came in playing bass because we had this emergency with Chris and he's become the most amazing bass player. Wow. Um, yeah, he's got the feel, you know, a yeah. bit of a, it's a bit of a, there's a bit of a line, you know, the Brewster thing. It's yeah. like, we're, you know, we're not better than anybody else, but we've got a certain sort of lean, if you like, yeah. musically. And so um, we're doing the two shows we do in New South Wales. My son, Tom's playing the drums. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. yeah he's fantastic. I mean, yeah. he, he, works at, he works as a project manager for a big landscape firm. He, he's not a professional musician. Oh, really? Hand him a pair of drumsticks and a, a drum kit. And it's magic. He could join the Angels tomorrow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> wow. That's great. I mean, what a buzz for you, though. I mean, I, I do a band with my daughter as well. She's 27. And um, yeah, you know, play together. It's just a, a, an amazing feeling. So, you, know, you know, it's like... <laughs> it is, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, I mean, we've done so many shows together that I don't walk on stage every night and go, wow, that's my son over there on the bass. But yeah. when I stop to think about it, I go, wow, that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> I used to push him around in a stroller. That's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, actually, I'll put a video on. So I'm playing tomorrow night with my daughter. And uh, I found an old video of me, you know, back when the hair was down here. And she had my little case about two years old, you know, roadie for me. <laughs> and, and tomorrow night, I'll yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I remember the hair down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, so with Mick. So he played for Baby Animals, didn't he, on drums? Yeah, he still does, yeah. Oh, he yeah. still does. He, okay. he, you know, We've done so many Red Hot Summer shows, stuff like that, that, um, that there's a, this wonderful camaraderie that exists with, with us all, you know, the guys in the living end and yep. and uh, um, James Rain and, and the Baby Animals and Ella Hooper and, and you know, yep. the Killing Heidi. Yep. You know, we've, we've, just, we've just become such good friends. That's great. Uh, yeah. So with this thing, uh, with 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 Nick Norton, who's of course a wonderful drummer, mm. uh, taking the front role, we we wanted we did we could have just gone in the studio and had Nick play the drums and then sing the song, yeah. but we just thought no, let's let's create a a, a little entity. Mm. Um, so we asked Mick to play. Yeah. So I don't know whether we're going to do any more. I don't know where it's going. Who? It really doesn't matter. It's not yeah. it's not the big, but. It, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And it's going to be really good, to be honest. It really is. <laughs> yeah, no, I look forward to it. Next, I saw one of your videos, the live one, I think it was 2013. I can't remember now. We've had uh, Dave singing on it. And then, um, yeah, Nick was on drums and he was doing those higher harmonies. So that's what made me realize, wow, he's got a great voice. <laughs> he's got an amazing voice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. We did, we, we've done one of these uh, Bruce Brothers Electric. Uh, shows uh, as a kind of a warm up to see well, well what's this like you know and mm. have we got the right songs etc and we've rewritten the set because we realised well actually there's some songs that we didn't do that we should so yep. but uh, we we do a Bruce about a song called Passing Through which went over really well and I'm, I'm playing the guitar and it get, Sam does this bass solo mm. and I went. Hang on a minute. So I took my guitar off and handed it to Nick, and he just ripped up this solo. He oh, really? <laughs> he's, yeah, he's a he's a serious talent. Yeah, and we love him. He's, you know, he's, you know, I've known I've known him since he. I first met him when he was at school with Sam, with my son Sam. Okay. Yeah. So you know, we go way back. Yeah. Now I also I watched your uh, kicking down the door uh, last week. I, I hired it off YouTube and. But yeah, I think that was great. Really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that, mo that movie. I'm, yeah. um, 
some people have said, well, there's not enough about the current band, but it's 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 not the story of the angels. It's a story of the angels, and it, and it deals with a period from when the band was sort of driving around Australia in an old E.H. Holden station wagon and seemingly getting nowhere yeah. to success and then the touring overseas and then later on in that process of touring overseas, the sort of problems have started to develop, financial problems and, mm. um, you know, that whole thing. So, and then, of course, the the, the breakup of me and my brother and, yeah. and then the redemption later on. And so... It deals with all of that, uh, as the director said. Yeah, it's it's not the story of the angels. It's a story, but it's a very significant story. So I, I'm really I love it. Yeah, that no, was really good. There's a lot of things yeah. I didn't know. Like I didn't know Doc played bass when you guys first started. Yeah, when we first started, well, actually, when we when we formed the Keystone Angels yeah. in 1974, Doc was playing rhythm guitar, uh, and I was playing the bass. Oh. Uh, and then it became pretty obvious that, that Doc wasn't going to make it as a guitar player. <laughs> uh, we love him. We love his memory. But, yeah, he, he, yeah so so we swapped over. And then Buzz Bidstrup joined the band in 76. And uh, I think we'd been out on the road for about a week. And Buzz came up to me and said, you've got to get me a bass player. <laughs> yeah. and, okay. Uh, so that's how Doc became the front man. Yeah. And, wow. and, and, you know, when he was first the front man, it was a little embarrassing at times because he was trying to find his thing. Yeah. And, then, and then we started writing better songs and then, and then he got into that character, uh, which was more theatrical. Yeah. And yeah, he was just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. yeah. That was amazing. And even like the, the start of it, I like the way you have the, am I ever going to see your face again? You know, without the... The chance, <laughs> and then it goes into it. Yeah, well, you know, no one knows where that chant come from, but it's. I oh, know that's crazy. It's uh, it's certainly, yeah, it's a, you know, we we won't be doing that song with Bruce Brothers Electric no, no. because, <laughs> yeah. because you know that it, that's going against what we're trying to do. But yep. but um, uh, look, you know, the things become huge. I mean, you know, that was our first single. Yeah. Um, I'm actually really excited because the June Rats did it and they got Rick and me to... I saw that, yeah. Yeah, and they, they, they sort of flew Rick and me over to Sydney and we yeah. did it with them in the Triple J studios. And that's gone through the roof now. And I'm yeah. thinking, you know, as we enter our 50th year, the fact that this really cool young band has done such a great job of recording mm. our song and then, you know, they love that we came and joined them and yeah. we feel the same way. It's a mutual thing. It's just fantastic. Um, so, I, I'd, I, you know, I'd like to put that version on our 50-year celebration album. I, uh, yeah, that'd be great. I've, I've asked them how they feel about it and they're really excited about it, so we'll see what happens, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I must say that, that that song has got me into a lot of trouble. <laughs> and it lost my job, actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was doing a, um, I think it was a dead ball or a, a thing for a, a Christian college. And yeah. <laughs> the, the, all these young guys come and say, oh, can you play that song? Yeah, maybe see face again. So we started and the dance floor just was packed. And then, you know, they, they got to the chorus, they all sang it. And then the principal just came running up and said, stop, stop, stop. You can't do that here, you know? <laughs> really? Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Wow. <laughs> oh, well, he doesn't have a sense of humour, does he? That's right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Look, you know, we, we've done shows uh, as Brewster Brothers. Uh, we used to do this thing in uh, Threadbow. Uh, what was it called now? But we did it for kids with um, cancer. Okay. Uh, and uh, you'd have these six-year-olds down the front. And they did it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's become massive. And yeah. it's... it's, it's Nothing that we started. The thing is, it all started with the with the with the uh, you know, yes. the general population, they, wow. and we don't, we have no idea how it happened because this happened in the early eighties, and and there weren't any no social media, no mobile phones, etc. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how, but it spread around the country like a wildfire. I don't know how it quite happened, but yeah. there's various theories. The one I, I kind of like, I kind of believe, is that it started on a cruise ship. Okay. So that sort of makes sense because people come from everywhere to go on a oh, cruise ship. Yeah. yeah. 
but who knows? Yeah. How about overseas? Do they do they happen overseas as well? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I know Rick did a Rick did a gig in Nashville. Yeah. I wasn't in the band at the time, but they played some gig in Nashville, hmm. or I think it was Nashville, or it might have been New Orleans, and they did it there. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I've seen a few videos on YouTube, um, you know, like reaction videos where it's got you guys playing it live in Melbourne, actually. And um, yeah, and like the Americans, it's like, well, you know, what's going on here? <laughs> it's like it's yeah, part well, of the song. It's Australian sense of humour. I love it. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Now, the other thing I got out of the, um, the, the documentary as well, the No Secrets, how you were talking about how that actually started as more of a ballad. Um, cause actually, cause I do that on my acoustic shows and I actually do it like more of a, a ballad type feel and it works, you know, people still dig the song. Yeah. But, um, the, the thing is, uh, it's really doc song, um, hmm. every word of it, but I think where Buzz got involved was a chorus, but the chorus, uh, they sang it to us and, and, um, and I, I actually looked across at Buzz and I said, that chorus, you can't really, you know, it's a, that's an eagle song. Because okay. it went, it sort of went, she keeps no secrets. Oh, really? right? All very nice and pretty, but it yeah. was like, it sounded like Desperado or something. One of the yeah. eagle songs. I went, hey, you can't. <laughs> and that's when Rick said, well, why don't we go, she keeps no, she keeps no, she keeps no secrets from you. Yeah. And I said, yeah, why don't we rev it up? Hmm. Why don't we, we let's turn this into a rock song? Because it, it suited. So I come up with that, you know, the riff. And, hmm. and, 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 and so that so that sort of, and that was really appropriate because at the time we were putting out singles like Take a Long Line and Marseille and, yeah. you know, Coming Down on Me, et cetera. It was all, you know, it well, was, close, you know, it was, we weren't a punk band, but it, we, we sort of, on yeah. the edge of all that kind of stuff, you know. And um, uh, anyway, it worked. It was a huge single. And then Rick and I have always kicked our sauce because, you know, Buzz, Buzz kept sort of wanting to be a songwriter and stuff. And he, he used to complain a fair bit. and was like, well, well, why don't complain to us? Because we don't choose the songs. Yeah. George and Harry Vander and George Young choose our songs. Mm. You know, we write the songs and they choose them. And if You know, but he, he used to... He used to carry on a bit, so we said, "Ah, you, you have the publishing." Well, that was a stupid mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's cost us a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, it's. You know, I don't regret, you know, it's just, yeah. but that's the actual truth. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And maybe I should t shut up and not talk about it. But you know, he seems to talk about it a fair bit, so you know, yeah. I can, I can just, I've got a right of reply. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Doc wrote, Doc wrote that song. Yeah. Well, I like the way you describe it in the, the documentary about the the nick nick riffs. The dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we were we were in Alberts with ACDC. Then, mm. you know, thank thankfully you know, they actually introduced us to Harry and George yeah. when we did three gigs with them in South Australia, and they saw something in us, and we became pretty much instant friends and. So they went back to Sydney and told Harry and George about us and, you know, in the day we got signed up with them. And so we were in, we were, we did a lot of gigs with them mm. back in those wonderful days when Bon Scott was the singer yeah. and, uh, and which by the way, I also loved Brian Johnson, yeah, but yeah. Bon, bon, bon was just, yeah, yeah. I, I reckon he was the greatest rock singer in the world. Mm, for sure. Yeah. But, um, the thing is, we were often in the studio with them too, you know, and <laughs> and I, I was definitely influenced by Malcolm. And we I mean, we we'd sometimes sit in a hotel room with a couple of guitars and trade ideas, you know. So yeah, I was a huge fan of his playing, yeah. and I, I think he kind of liked my playing as well. So, but the thing is, we it it, it wasn't quite as calculated as with as, as this. I'll, I might come across sounding like we. We calculated everything we did. It was a natural process, but we what we didn't want to do is sound like ACDC. 
yeah. we wanted we, you know we wanted to have those elements but we wanted to have our own thing and uh i i've written a song called i ain't the one yeah i wrote that in a car sitting in adelaide and i heard the whole thing and and we, I think we recorded a demo of it the next day, and we all got excited because it had the Nick Nicks. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 you know we're all jumping up and down, going, "We found our sound." We found, and so the Nick Nicks become quite of a big thing. And yeah. it's not like we reinvented the wheel there either. Other bands have used Nick Nicks, but we made quite a thing of it. Yep. And and um, uh, that that gave us a little bit of a point of difference to ACDC. Um, of course, Doc, being a more mid-range singer, he we were, so we weren't trying to compete with Bon, or, yeah. um, and, and 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 lyrically we got into the kind of lyrics we were writing, which is, you know, kind of still quite proud of that. I think that's one of the reasons the band's still mm. quite relevant, you know, because yeah. we sort of didn't write about an era. Or, yeah. but nor did we write lovey-dovey pop songs yeah. and so you know musically i think and lyrically the band stands uh, pretty tall today still oh yeah yeah definitely yeah. i mean we do you know, face and no secrets in our set list with the, the cover band and they still go you know, really well and great songs will play miss uh, missy higgins she did a uh, red hot summer down here where i live mm. so when i met uh, Missy Higgins, she said, oh, I would have loved you to come up and play the song with me, but um, their bass player had got COVID and oh, no. I think it might be her husband or boyfriend or something who was playing the bass and he didn't know no secrets. Oh, really? So, so we kind of missed that opportunity, but um, yeah. oh, she was lovely. And yeah. uh, she, So she didn't do the song on, on that particular show, oh, but she no. does it in, in her show. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. yeah. Oh, both great songs. Now, the other thing I just want to quickly talk about is um, the, the, the thing about your brother um, standing still, which I didn't know about that. Like you said, hey, before he was doing it, he was like, just didn't really like the way he was moving. <laughs> so, hey, why don't you just stand still? And But to me, that's that's a really hard thing to do, what he's doing, because to stand there like that and not really look at the fretboard and you know, he's doing all these solos, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've said this in interviews that no one... Yeah. I can't imagine anybody being able to do what Rick did and he's ripping up guitar solos. I mean, yeah. like he's a frighteningly good player mm. and to stand motionless with a, the intensity, there's a huge intensity coming off Rick. He's not quite the same now. He's sort of a little bit more, you know, yeah, yeah. Gets in a, bit. <laughs> a little bit, you know, he doesn't have to, I mean, you know, when you're young, you're trying to establish yourself, you, you, you know, things like that become, mm. A major thing to do yeah but the thing is um I, mean, I can't speak for rick but it's so much a natural part of his personality mm. he, he's, he's like a buster keaton deadpan mm. you know and if you try and turn that into some kind of angus young you know yeah running around a stage rock guy it just doesn't work yeah it's yeah. just it, it look you know so um, and which, by the way, I'm not running Angus at Young. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it works for him. No, yeah. Nobody better <laughs> at that doing that kind of thing. But yeah. um, you know, that's another thing. You know, we're in the same record company as ACDC. So Rick taking that sort of mm. very hard, intense, motionless, like the statue thing, yeah. was a complete contrast to Angus. Yeah. So it's you know. Tough. Yeah. So we got two brothers, me me doing a rhythm guitar pattern that's not trying to sound like Malcolm, yeah. and uh, but still influenced by Malcolm, and Rick doing that other thing. A lot of Rick solos back in those days were kind of influenced by Angus. Mm. You listen to some of the solos that Rick was doing then, that they're, they're not massively different, you know, yeah. different. But his whole person person persona on stage was was of course really yeah. different but still great you know people used to come along to see doc and rick you know yeah. like they were foil you know doc, doc is running all over the place and rick's motionless and you know yeah, that's right but he's very melodic too his solos i found oh incredibly you know i mean yeah. rick we, we grew up in a classical musical family 
Yeah. Uh, dad was a principal cellist of the SA Symphony Orchestra and and his dad, who we never met because he died just before I was born, and he was a concert pianist. He started the first symphony orchestra in, <coughs> in, in South Australia. Mm. <coughs> he studied at the uh, London College of Music. Yep. Wrote over 600 works, including a symphony. When we do our um, Angels um, Symphony of Angels show, yep. we walk on stage for a piece of that symphony. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful. It's like we come yeah. full circle. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, that whole thing about melody, I mean, when, when Rick was doing piano, and Rick won the Steadford at the age of 16 in South Australia on piano, wow. he's a really good pianist. Yeah. And um, I remember when he was when he was down in, uh, in the living room of the grand piano there and he's practising that Dad would walk in and he'd say, now, Rick, make, make sure you make the melody sing. Oh, okay. Make the melody sing. Oh. And he took that approach to his guitar playing. Yep. So you can walk down the street and you can whistle Rick solos. Yep. When we played in Paris recently, we'd had this fantastic gig in Paris and the crowd, who I reckon were all, probably just about all of them were under the age of 35 and that we hadn't played there for 35 years. So it's yep. amazing that we had this sellout show. They sang every one of Rick's guitar solos. Yes. It was like we had this, 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 this like... <laughs> Other band with us. Yeah. <laughs> we walked off stage and just couldn't believe it. Yeah. It so good. Great. <laughs> uh, yeah. But even like I was watching some of the videos, you know, in research today, and um, just the way he does his, like the melodies, but they're the bends. I find that really the hardest thing to stand still and do that. Yeah. Because it's like sometimes, you know, it's like you, you bend and you move with the bends, but to stay still and do that, it's like, wow, how's he doing that? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Rick. You know, that's yeah. um, he. He, um, yeah, he's he's a frightening talent, you know. <laughs> but of yeah. course, I say to people, yeah, yeah, he's pretty good, he's pretty good. But he'd be nothing without the rhythm guitar. You know? <laughs> 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 Which of course, I don't mean, but uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, well, you know, this brother thing's been pretty good for us, you know, and it still is, you know. Mm. We, yeah, you know, we've had a are tough times, you know, in the mid eighties when we were touring America and losing money hand over fist and stuff, that was very hard and mm. caused me to leave the band for a while, but um, yeah, it's all good now. Yeah, that's right. You're back now, back together. It's great. Oh yeah. Yeah. And have been for you know a long, long time. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. That's excellent. Definitely. I recommend everyone to check out your yeah, documentary. Cause that's just, it's, I mean, for, don't have to be an angels fan, just a music fan in general, you know, to really get, um, yeah, it's a good story. It is, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, to me, it gives a really good insight of, of the dynamics of being in a rock band. It's, mm. a, it's, a, it's a crazy existence. Yeah. You know, we, we, were, we were all married at the time to our first wives. I mean, n none of our Rick, Doc and my first marriages survived that period. Yeah. Um, and yet they were good marriages in a way, but like, uh, it, it's it's a weird life, you know, yeah. and particularly then because we, we'd sometimes be out on the road for, well, when we started touring the world, we'd be out for months on end. Yeah. But <laughs> the meantime, we're getting into our 30s and starting to have children. Yeah. And so the pressures are quite enormous and, you know, oh, yeah. but I look back on it with nothing but fantastic memories, you know. Sure, there were bad times, or you know, a bit of a roller coaster, but yeah. But yeah, the movie I think does it does give a really good insight to that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So is that the only place it's available on YouTube? Um, I, it might be on iTunes. I'm not sure. I, okay. I haven't followed it because I, I mean I don't own the movie. Universal do. Oh, right, yeah. Universal in London, and yeah, I think it's. I think they've just released it in New Zealand. That might, that might be on, on the back of the shows we just did because we, we did great, you know. It was yep. really good. Um, so I can't really answer your question, but I think streaming it on YouTube and maybe, well, who knows, when maybe SBS will pick it up or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, hopefully it gets on like you know, Netflix or something like that. It'd be really good. It would be good, yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Do you play that piano there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I teach piano, guitar, drums. Ah, you're a one-man band. 
Yeah. Oh, my brother's a drummer as well. We, we grew up in bands together. Oh, cool. Like yourself. But <laughs> yeah. 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 It's pretty special. Oh, it is. Yeah. I mean, pretty much the same what you've done. You know, yeah, grew up in the band with my brother. Now I play with my daughter in the band. So, yeah, it's great. Keep it in the family. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, our friend, uh, you know, the, uh, in the uh, in Cheap Trick, you know, Rick Nelson and Robin Zander, they got they got kids in the band now, and and of course Jimmy Barnes, he's got he's he's got a lot of kids. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and yeah. you know, they're all with him, and uh, I think it's wonderful to be able to share it to that generation. Oh yeah, now, yeah. I've, had, I've had a few interviews lately. Like I had Phil Campbell from uh, Motorhead, you know, the guitarist. And yeah, he's in the band with all his uh, sons at the moment, like three sons. And himself, yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, well, we we can do something similar. Rick's son Jody's um, turning into an amazing sax player. He also plays guitar, and so he's really talented. Oh wow! Um, and he's played with us, you know, as a <laughs> little you know cameo spot. Come on, and played take a long line solo in harmony. Oh, yeah. And then the next thing you know, we're doing the Symphony of Angels show, and he does, he walks in with a saxophone and does the take a long line uh, line take a long line solo in the sax it's fantastic <laughs> so, that's really cool uh, and my son harry i mean he could step into my shoes tomorrow if i fell over yeah he, he's an incredible guitar player oh wow well. he's so better got, than me <laughs> so you got the three boys have you yeah i got three sons yeah oh, okay yeah 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 so i knew about was it um was it sam yeah he came in to sort of be temporary I mean, Sam did a bachelor of music degree and majored in guitar playing. He's a great guitar player, mm. really good. Um, but he came in as a sort of a temp playing bass. Yeah. And and so he really studied Chris's style. And then uh, sadly, Chris <clears throat> didn't make it, mm. uh, died in 2013. So Sam's been with us since 2012. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> it is good. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Sad reasons, but life goes on. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, I mean, like I said, just to play with your your siblings, it's yeah, it's an amazing feeling. It is. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. But uh, yeah, looking forward to doing these Bruce Brothers election. We we do next week. We're doing the Blues Fest at Byron Bay with uh, oh, yeah. with the Angels, oh, okay. and then then I think it's the week after we start these couple of weekends of Brewster Brothers Electric and yeah. 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 Sort of keeps you young, I reckon. Yeah, right cool. semi young. <laughs> yeah. So it's only the two shows that the at the moment. Uh, we're just doing four. We're doing two um, in New South Wales. We're doing the Bridge Hotel. We're doing Wickham Park uh, in Newcastle, and then we go to Adelaide to the Gov. Oh, okay, and then which is a wonderful venue and the, uh, the Mimo. Is it Mimo Music Hall? Yeah, I don't think I've ever been there. Yeah, the music. yeah, I think it's a bit of a vibe on it. It seems yeah. like it's going quite well, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, we always love coming to Melbourne, mate. It's a great city. Yeah, that's good. Mm. <laughs> oh, excellent. But yeah, I'll yeah. be there. So hopefully, I'll get to say good day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, come along. Please. Yeah, yeah. not for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, I better get to school. I got to start teaching now. Oh, really? Yeah, I start at uh, twelve o'clock. Oh right, okay. Well, you enjoy that, and yeah, yeah my, my my youngest son Harry's teaching music at uh, school in Sydney. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's no, good. I love it. I've been doing it full time what last twenty years or so. Have you really? Uh, yeah, I love it. It's great. Ah, uh, good on you. That's yeah. great. All right, mate. Well, good thanks, to talk John. To Adam. Yeah, no, hopefully, yeah, I'll see you now. A few weeks time. Okay. Cheers. All right, see you then. Bye. Cheers, mate. Bye. <laughs>